Hello, Zeal Academy. Welcome. Today we're here learning about day, day six. Day six. Now, day six is a little bit more special, at least to us, just because day six, God created humans. humans. But before he created humans, he created land animals. And that's where we get all our land animals. We have dinosaurs, dogs, polar bears, horses, tigers, crocodiles, <laughs> cheetahs, even camels. There's a lot of an land animals. Okay, so we have seen that God has created land animals. But there's so many more than just some of the toys that we have. We've gone on quite a few field trips in order to get just some of the animals that God created. So let's do the field trip first, and then we'll talk about us. Take a look. Hi, Zeal Academy. Welcome to date. We are doing a wonderful adventure. As you can see, we're going on a little safari. We're having day six field trip on how God created the land animals and man. So man, and we're gonna check out the land animals. So we want you to join us and our abuelo, which is grandfather right in here. Spanish. How you doing? <laughs> we're gonna have a great time checking out the exotic animals, well, more like God's animals on land. Come and join us. Okay, so these are llamas. And these are the vultures. You see those birds? Those birds eat dead things. And we've got ostriches, all kinds of ostriches. What's that? Deer. That's right. That's an antelope. Goats. They're a bunch of billy goats. Longhorn cattle. Can you imagine those cattle? <gasps> oh, look, a wildebeest. And that, a zebra. Look at that baby rhinoceros. Sunbathing. In the mud. Ooh, a lion. That's the king of the jungle. Mm-hmm. And his lioness. And you see the little baby cub right there? Oh! It's so cute! Ooh, a tiger. I like tigers. <gasps> Two hump camel. Those are fun. Giraffes. That was a fun time. Oh yeah, giraffes just munch the lettuce out of your hand. Mm -hmm. They're so cute. And tall? Yeah, their neck is, is super long. Ooh, a gorilla. That's a hyena. It's they laugh. <laughs> it's like a little. In the Lion King. Yeah, that's from there. Is that real? No, it's what it would have looked like if uh, we went to a special museum to see this. Imagine living with these. You know, a lot of people in the time of Genesis lived with dinosaurs until the flood. Chompers like the watermelons. Is that, is that real? It looks it, doesn't it? No, those are also simulated as are puppets. But can you imagine playing with a little baby one? Oh, that's a boar. That's Pumba from the Lion King. <gasps> oh, koalas. I love koalas. Uh, 
possum. Ah, we should have a possum. Squirrels, we have a lot of squirrels in our backyard. Mm, an emerald tree boa. Komodo dragon. It's a white frog. Oh, that's a toad. Yeah, that's a toad. Iguana. Take a close look. And the caterpillars, yay! Now, I don't know if they came in day six because they crawl on the ground or if God did this for the butterflies, but either way, I put it in just so you can see the different kinds. See, there's different kinds of caterpillars and butterflies. You have two different kinds right there. There's a third, and there's many, many more. That's a newt. Kind of like a lizard. And a grasshopper. That's a locust. That's a part of what's going on in the world today. And a slug. See, God pays attention to little things. So what did you think about that? That was our virtual field trip. I love these virtual field trips. We get to talk about the animals and we can see them again. And it's so beautiful, the ones that we are able to see and experience. Just a bunch of animals that we don't necessarily get to see every day. But aside from the ones that we do see, we know because it says so in the Bible. On day six, God created the animals of the land. Let's read what God actually said on day six. Then God said, let the earth, let the earth, keyword, produce living creatures according to their kinds, livestock creatures that crawl and the wildlife of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. So God made the wildlife of the earth according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that crawl according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Right there, does that mean that those creatures created other kinds of creatures or everybody had to follow what they are? Everybody had to follow what they are. Right, because like, a, a dinosaur, what we know as a dinosaur, cannot create a cat. And a polar bear can't create a dog. That's right. It, that, that's weird. But that doesn't happen, right? A polar bear has to make a polar bear. Exactly. And a dog has to make a dog. A dinosaur has to make a dinosaur. Now, are there different species of dogs? Yeah, we got like four. Yeah. Right? Four different species. Of the same kind of animal. Right? Okay. Moving on. Then, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. They will rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the livestock, the whole earth, and the creatures that crawl on the earth. So God created man in his own image. He created him in the image of God. He created the male and female. That, did he make a mistake? God never makes mistakes. No, he doesn't. He is perfectly good. He can't, he can't even make a teeny tiny mistake. Because then there would be sin. sin. Hmm. Okay, so now that we read what God did, and it's just a little portion of it, because then it says God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful, multiply on the earth, and subdue it. Rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and every creature that crawls on the earth. God also said, look, I have given you every seed bearing plant on the surface of the entire earth and every tree whose fruit contains seeds. This will be food for you. So he already told Adam, which is the first person, mankind he told them what to eat for all the wildlife of the earth 
for every bird of the sky and for every creature that crawls on the earth, everything having the breath of life in it, I have given every green plant for food. That means everything that he created, animals of everywhere, was supposed to eat the green plants for food. And it was so, and God saw that he had made, and it was very good indeed. Everything was good. Was there anything scary? No. No. Was there anything bad? No. Anything evil? No. Anything that died? No. No. Nothing, nothing of that until they ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's right. Everything there was made for them to eat and he told them one rule and that one rule was not to eat of the tree of good and evil exactly but they ate well we'll get there on the next class for this because that's a whole different subject process <laughs> that's a big class it's taken me a very long time to come up with all these things because there's so much that happened on day six and it's so detailed with so many um, verses and uh, proofs that had to come into this. So we're gonna take it one step at a time and every time that we learn from day six, we're going to take parts of this that I have been able to gather together to be able to teach it all in completion with enough time and the shortness of our videos to make it fun and interesting. Okay, so with that being said, let's close our power book. It's called a Bible. It, yes, but it's a book of power. Do you know why it's called a book of power? Because it's the word of God. Yes, it's a book that was written. It has to be, there has to be an author. There's a book and it has to be an author. And the author was God's God's people. Well, yes, it was both human and divine. That means that God's Holy Spirit told the human what to write. Right? Just like a painting tells you that there had to be a painter because the painting couldn't just happen. The same thing happens with the creation and the Bible. There has to be a creator and there has to be an author in order for it to actually be. So we're talking about the Bible here and everything was done according to its kind. Now the Bible is human and divine book, which was God's spirit that wrote through men. Men physically wrote what God said. God is three persons in one being, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what comes and lives inside of you when you have accepted Jesus as, as your Savior. So we have a soul, body, and spirit. God made everything in six days all very good, including dinosaurs. He made everything. So no animal says prayers or has a concept of God, but every person prays. Because God put that sense of, of him, of him, inside of you. The way you know good versus bad is because that's God telling you good versus bad. Do you think an animal, unless you train them and teach them, do they know good versus bad? No. No. They'll just be bad. Exactly. People may not necessarily pray to God. Or they pray differently but they pray because we have a soul body and spirit and that is tied into the breath of life we are able to interact with the living God because we have a spirit that animals do not so are you safe yes I know you're safe I'm safe are you safe that's a question for you to ask yourself. <laughs>
the message of the Bible. What is it? What is the message of the Bible? God so loved the world that loving God that he gave his only begotten son, which is Jesus, who died in shame on the cross so that those who believe in him could have their sins forgiven and escape their judgment of God. That whoever believes in him by faith alone should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16 That's something that you need to like always no. He is a great God, a God who gave a great gift to all, great tragedy to those who reject it and rely on their sins to live by. So it's kind of like when God created Adam, Adam saw that God was his father because that's just like you see your father as your father because at the end of the day we created you. It's the same thing as Adam with God. So when you do something wrong, don't you get a punishment to correct that behavior, to do something right? Does that take away from the fact that your parents love you? No. Love from your parents to you, so you understand, and from God to you, is the same kind, because God loves you even more. But it's the same because no matter how you get corrected from being disobedient, or lying, or hurting something, doing something that's wrong or evil, because at the end of the day, it's all evil because it's sin. It's your nature. So in being corrected to so learn from your mistakes, that means your parents still love you, no matter what. So God still loves you. And he made a way for you to be with him. And it's by faith. Faith is blind faith. Even though you weren't around when God, when Jesus was on the earth, you still have facts. You still have proof and you have to have faith that if you believe in that then you'll be a child of god and you'll inherit the kingdom of heaven just like jesus did blind faith when you have no facts you just have things that people tell you there's no proof and you're supposed to believe in it when and when your life means nothing that's evolution that's not the god i serve so let's pray for those of people that actually want to believe in Jesus and that are changing their minds and do believe in Jesus because of our lessons, let's pray with them so that they can be a part of God's family, okay? So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for everything you have given us, Lord. Thank you for all our blessings. Thank you for the creation that you have given us. Thank you. These are all beautiful, wonderful gifts, Lord. We want to extend this prayer to all those under the sound of my voice that they believe in you and your son, Jesus Christ, that you came in the flesh to our world and died on the cross for all the sins to make a way to save us from that curse of, called sin. We want to be a part of your family, Lord, and we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And we now say that we are a part of your family. We praise you and worship you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome to God's family. We look forward to teaching you more and more each day about who God is and how special you are to him. God bless you.